Welcome to the Equestrian Perspective Podcast. I'm Felicity Davies and I'm here to simplify horse training and teach you absolutely everything you need to know about how to build both your own and your horse's confidence levels, form an amazing relationship together and feel empowered in any environment. And on this podcast, I'll be sharing my best advice, trainings and mindset shifts so you can truly connect with your horse and pursue your goals in a way that feels good for both of you. So get ready to embark on a new equestrian perspective and I'll see you on the other side. Hey, hey, welcome to an impromptu episode of the Equestrian Perspective podcast featuring me, myself and I. And I just wanted to chat about how we can create change in the equestrian industry and really advocate for our horses in a positive way. Because watching the dressage at the Olympics last night, I noticed that afterwards there was a lot of negative judgmental comments, um, even harassing and bullying comments to like some of the riders that were competing at the Olympics. Now, I'm not condoning how they were treating their horses or riding, but I do think there are better ways that we can go about positively influencing others and creating change and advocating for our horses rather than just attacking other people, because that's how I viewed it. Um, And if anyone posted anything like that and feels differently, I'd love to have a conversation with you about it. But the way I really see positive change being made in the equestrian industry is through a safe and inviting lens where we can welcome people that either realize that they did things that they want to change like did things in the past and say hey I effed up and they want to change now or maybe they did things in the past that they felt really good about but they want to do things even better we need to create a safe inviting environment for them to feel safe enough to come into and ask for help basically so the way i see this happening is if we really want to advocate for our horses the best thing we can do is educate other people um, and do it in a compassionate way knowing that people don't know people only know what they know um, and for the most part they are doing the best that they can with the knowledge that they have and humans are such complex people there's so many different variables going on it's not just as simple as you get one piece of information you change straight away often there are lots of different elements and it's really hard to know everyone's personal situations because yeah there's just so many different things going on and I I really do believe that for the most part people are doing the best that they can um, but maybe they need some additional tools or support to kind of help guide them through their situation so it's not so confronting because let's face it change is often really really uncomfortable firstly you have to recognize that you've done something that you want to change And there's a reason you want to change it because it's not working or there's something going wrong. Um, And I put it out there to my Instagram audience and said, hey, when you tried to or what caused you to change to be better for your horses and to, yeah, lean into more ethical ways of training horses. And for the most part, people will say that they had a horse that they needed to do things differently with. Um, or they really felt like in their gut that something just didn't feel right and they wanted to do things differently and they had to reach out to other people for support so that they could feel better about what they're doing or help this specific horse and that sort of created that ripple effect whereas had you not had had they not have had those horses or that gut feeling that was really pushing them in another direction you wouldn't do it because it just feels comfortable and you're not really looking for ways to do things differently because we all like to be safe and comfortable at the end of the day. And yeah, I'll share a bit about my story changing with horses and how that came about for me. But yeah, often something big has to happen for us to really want to change and do things differently. It's not as simple as just getting a piece of information and doing it because actually let me go into my my own personal journey changing with horses for you because I think this will kind of make things make a bit more sense so 
yeah, I rode for years and years and years, competed every single weekend, was in such a routine. And then when I first started to listen to myself and think, hang on a minute, this doesn't feel right. And seeing other people. And uh, actually, I think I started following some really inspiring, like, horsemanship based accounts that I thought that's really cool and then my friend Amalia got into horsemanship and I was watching her do some things so it was just these seeds were being planted of real inspiration really of just wow you can do things differently and then slowly there were just pieces of education that were sort of coming together for me until I got to a point where my horse was also struggling with the atmosphere that I was showing him in Um, and I wasn't enjoying competing as much, and I was also seeing other people do things differently with their horses and having better relationships with their horses, and it was like a big slap in the face for me to go, okay, I need to change. But for months, I had information that I could have changed on much earlier for my horse's benefit, but I didn't because it was uncomfortable. And... I didn't want to face the fact that my horses maybe didn't like me and that I maybe had to go back many steps to repair what I was doing and fix things because I was still driven by my competition results. If I had changed, that would result in me skipping some competitions. It would result in people questioning what I was doing around me. And to be honest, that felt at that time too uncomfortable to kind of dive into. So I just put it in the back of my mind and I kept going. Um, So I really relate to people that might have some pieces of information that they might want to act on, but they don't because there's other variables at play. And I know that it might seem like, how could you do that? Don't you love your horse? It's like, of course you love your horse. It's just, it's uncomfortable to take responsibility for your actions sometimes and realize that some things that you, you were doing might not have been the best for your horse's sake like that's a hard pill to swallow and it seems yeah backwards to kind of delay it but sometimes that's just what you do to kind of preserve your own sanity in a way but yeah then I got to an uncomfortable point and yeah then I decided to make these shifts more positively for horses and learning new methods but I had to get to that uncomfortable place to make that change And I know everyone's different in their journey. Some people don't need as much of a kind of a push and some people need more of a push than others. But I think it comes down to when I look at, for me personally, what helped me create that change, it was those seeds that were planted along the way that were very inspiring and open and non-judgmental for the most part. Okay, because then it felt like I did have these avenues that I could take to get the support and get the education that I really wanted. Had I had seen a video that someone had put up where they were saying, how could this rider do this? This is horrible, blah, blah, blah. I would have been like, oh my God, I can't contact that person because they're probably just going to judge me and what I've done. Like, oh, this is embarrassing. Okay. So yeah, I think some ways that we can really go about initiating change is from an education standpoint and just being open and um, honest about how, like how to work with horses in a more ethical way and looking at the science behind things as well. And I think it comes back to planting seeds of going, okay, um, let's plant a seed, but do it in a way that's very intentional. Because like I said, not every People have to get to a point where they're ready to change. And before that, we just have to plant those seeds. So when I say planting the seeds, I think it's very important how you plant that seed. So like I said before, there's a way where you might plant a seed where you're like, oh my God, like, look at this. This is horrible. Like, why are people doing this? I think in that case, the seed you're planting is, this is horrible. Like, uh, I'm not willing to speak to anyone who's doing something like this because how dare you do this? which I think is going to like create a huge divide between you and people that are wanting to change because they're not going to feel safe enough to contact you and reach out to you versus if you plant a seed of, hey, like I have empathy and compassion for people that are on the other side of this, but this is how I'm viewing the situation and sort of do it from a very educational standpoint and a very empathetic and compassionate compassionate standpoint, being like, hey, I understand where you're coming from, but this is what I see as well. If you're wanting to change, if you're wanting some more information, if you're wanting some help, please reach out to me. I'd love to support you and I won't judge you. 
That second option sounds way, way, way more inviting than that first option. Okay, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> I know everyone's different, but I just wanted to throw that out there. And yeah, I think it's really, really important that we do advocate for our horses and we do it, focus on educating the broader community on more ethical ways of handling and working with horses. But yeah, I think it just comes back to ultimately you have to work on helping the human find a reason to change. It's not just as simple as sort of throwing it out there. And we always have to remember that there are humans on the other end of whatever we're writing about or talking about or speaking about. And we need to think about, okay, if we want to yeah, advocate for our horses, we need to do it in a way where we can help this person um, feel comfortable enough to seek the change that we would like them to make for their horses and our horses would like them to make. So, yeah. I just really wanted to kind of throw that out there because I think social media is such an amazing space and I think if we get very intentional about how we want to help horses and spread our messages, we can do it in a really, really positive way that's going to help more horses rather than create a divide between the horsemanship community and the mainstream equestrian community because that's the last thing we want. We want people in that mainstream community to feel comfortable enough to like come towards us and like ask for help and ask for support and be like hey that's cool how can I incorporate this into here um I just see that as such a yeah it's it's I just imagine if we could like narrow that divide between those two groups of people and just help that mainstream industry see different ways and also, I think moving forwards from like a traditional standpoint, if we look at competitions and competing and things like that, I really feel like if we can create a good base of change and then create systems in place where we almost create our own competitions and things like that so that everything's starting on a fresh slate, you're not having to deal with years and years of tradition and so much, um, so many people, so many layers of people behind what's in a rule book whether whereas we could start something fresh um, really focus on partnership with our horses amongst other things and sort of go from there and I think yeah I just see so many opportunities for such quick change as well if we're willing to be inviting and open about what we're doing and really just want to help people and be okay knowing that everyone's on their own journey and even just a small change in some people is better than nothing and like big change does often take time and that is okay Um, and just celebrating people for like trying and also I just want to touch on before I wrap up like with our horses we always talk about focusing on the things that we want to reinforce and reward, um, breaking things down into tiny pieces and being clear about what we're saying. Like, I think we can do the same things with people. Like if we just get really, like be really positive about what we want to encourage, um, break things down into tiny pieces and shape things out and know that people are on the right track. They've just, even though it might not be perfect, like acknowledge where they are and reward them each step of the way and yeah just be clear about what your what the message is that you're putting out i just think there's so much opportunity and scope for yeah creating massive change and just treat people a bit like we train horses it's the same stuff we all learn by the same learning theory (laughs) um and yeah thank you for listening to this episode so just to recap if we want to create change we need to focus on the educational standpoint Um, and planting seeds in a really inviting and safe and compassionate way so that people can feel comfortable enough enough approaching us when they are ready to change because not everyone's ready to change and that is okay but if there are people that are wanting to change but they just don't know who to go to that's on us we need to publicly say that hey we're ready to help you okay Um, and then yeah Focus on reinforcing all the things that you like. Break things down into tiny pieces, knowing that they're not going to be perfect straight away. And know that people are genuinely, for the most part, doing their best. 
that's what I honestly feel. So yeah, hope you found this episode helpful. And yeah, if you enjoyed it, please share it around on social media. I'd really appreciate that. If you think other people should hear this message, that would be really helpful. Um, And if you want to keep this conversation flowing, reach out to me at Felicity Davies with an underscore at the end on social media or Felicity Davies Horsemanship and Mindset Mentor on Facebook. I'd love to chat. And if you're someone that's wanting to make a change or is interested, I would absolutely love to help you please reach out to me um, and we can chat further. Okay, lots of love. Bye.